Hey guys, Craig here again. Um, so this is part four of the Jackal build. So we've gone from step 27, and then we've gone all the way through to the very end to step 31. Okay, so coming from step 27, what we actually did, we started with the front rops, um, the rear smoke dischargers and the bowmen stuff down here. So what I've actually done with this is part C16 here, I actually glued this to the to the chassis first. I've assembled all of the um, front rops bar here and then I glued it to the front of the um, vehicle prior to it going on. Um, so you'll see that in a second. There's a little bit that's been forgotten in this step. Um, as you can see in the front, it's got the smoke discharges already placed. But in the back, it tells you how to make the smoke discharges here, which slots onto the back. If you go back through... Um, to step 26 there's no smoke discharges actually placed on the vehicle um, so all you need to do to build the front up is where you get part b11 which is the plate that the the tubes stick to you base there's two little slots on the top of the ecm bracket you place the two b11s on either side and then place the little tubes on for your smoke discharges um, so that's been admitted from the instructions altogether. Um, so what you'll end up with is that. So you've got part B11, which is this the plate at the back here, and then you just you just build up the smoke discharger unit. So as you can see, I've what I was on about. I've placed all the rops on the front. There's two little grooves here. Um, I don't know if that's actually focusing or if it's if it's mucky. Um, there's two little slots just down the front here that these two brackets hook onto. This one is part of the, the actual bar. This one is a separate piece and then you glue it to the bar and then the two slots you just put it onto the front. But that's what I've basically done and I've left it like that for painting. Um, so I'm going to tape off all this part down here. Same on the front of the vehicle. Paint all this up and get it primed, painted and all that and weathered. And then glue that to the front of the vehicle just for ease um, in painting this whole whole piece up. So uh, there was no issues really other than the missing, uh, what do you call it, smoke discharges. All this bit at the back is fairly straightforward and simple. Uh, you can't really go wrong with that. Moving around, we start going into the, the actual Wimmick kit. So if you follow the instructions here, you're going to really struggle putting the, the actual um, ring onto the top of the vehicle. So the easiest way that I found is put D60, this piece on, to the uh, chassis over here. So what you've got is these, these two bars pinched together. And then this little groove here on the actual Wimmick glues to a cutout in the back of here so that helps considerably but put that bracket on you've then got eight b41s now b41s go here 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 and same on the other side and then you slot a30 as you can see here between if you try and build this like this you've got no chance what i've done is i've done the inner ones first I've placed the what are these A30s onto here. Then I've put the other B41 on the end, and I've done that on all four corners. And then once I've done that, I've then attached A30 to the actual uh, weapons mount, and then built it up that way rather than trying to do this. This is a complete nightmare to do. Um, to give you some idea what you're dealing with those um pieces those b30s hold on a second so that's a b30 on the tip of my finger um and a set of very pointy tweezers so you've got eight of those to make that weapons mount um fit properly so doing that is going to take a lot of time it's really frustrating particularly trying to get all these little pieces lined up and trying to get this 
to sit properly. So it's the same thing. Glue the inner ones on first. Let it dry. Put A30 on. Put the outers on. Let it dry. But make sure A30 can still move backwards and forwards because you need to adjust it. Then glue it to the weapons mount. Then do these pieces. And then glue this part to that part. And then you should be fine. The mirrors aren't an issue. Um, if you're careful. I've had an accident with mine. I've snapped the little bar here. That was just cutting it off of the tree. So what I've actually got is two pieces for the mirror. Um, which is going to be very hard. As you can see. It's going to be very hard to glue them back together. Uh, oh actually both mirrors have snapped. Because <laughs> they're, so, they're so tiny and fragile. The It's so thin. Trying to get these off. It, it's just snapped. So. I don't think mine's going to have mirrors on it. So when you're getting them off the tree, just be extremely careful um, doing that. So to show you what I'm on about, so you've got the little brackets here and on the inside, same here and on the inside on all four corners. Then you've got this bar that needs to be loose uh, so you can adjust it. And if you get it right, this whole section should fold flat and raise up to this point. And then you glue it to this bar, this back bar here, which then gives it some support. Uh, but getting that right is, is pretty tricky because it's so fiddly. Moving on, we then go on to the GMG launcher. This is fairly straightforward and simple. Um, again, it's a little bit fiddly in places, particularly when you put the little photo etch on at the front. Building up the, the actual weapon mount itself here. That's not too hard. The only interesting part is here, which is E18, which sits at an angle. It doesn't sit flat. So if you look at E18 there, there's a little pin on one of the ends. And that glues to the little hole here. And then it actually, that little part doesn't sit flat. It actually glues up an angle. So the, so the GMG launcher is resting on top of this. Ammo box, nothing to worry about. This um, bracket for the Wimmick and the two little adjuster knobs, no problems there. The seat was no issues and all of that goes together quite nicely. And then you've got a little handle on the inside. Um, so what the GMG builds up to is this. So or you, when you're putting the little handles on, you just got to make sure that both handles are, are square. Because that's like the handle that you hold um, to cock it and stuff. So just make sure they're equal on both sides. The little photo etch part at the front is just here, which you can't really see. Um, but it is there. So that's your GMG launcher. Uh, I'm sorry if this keeps going out of focus. It's just purely because of how small it is. So that's a GMG launcher and how it's supposed to look. That wasn't really hard to build. The weapons mount kit. So you've got the little handle on the here. You've got the actual mount for the GMG launcher here. Uh, ammo box and then the seat. And then on the inside you can just about see it. There's a little handle just there. Um, that's fairly straightforward and easy. Coming on to the Jimpy. Jimpy wasn't really hard. These pieces here, C93 and C94, are very, very thin. Uh, getting these off the sprues is quite hard without snapping it. Um, but one, once you do get it off, it glues on quite easy. The ammo boxes and the um, ammo tray, no issues with that at all. And then the rear plane is quite simple. Now, if you're going to put antennas on, you're going to have to chop these the ends off before you glue it on so you can drill the hole for the antenna. Um, and then it's fitting GPMG weapons mount and the plane. So the GPMG is there. Um, nothing outrageous with that. But ice on mine, when I took this off the sprue... There's like a little knobbly bit here on the end and that snapped off. 
so I had to glue it a little bit awkwardly to try and get that to um, fit properly it's actually that side look um, again apologies for this poor focus on this side it's not actually glued properly just here because I, I cut the pin off getting it off the sprue uh, but other than that the the little tab at the end which goes into the thing is free moving the focus on this is awful so this little end piece here can still move so you can move the weapon up and down um, but in essence that's a GPMG ready to go on the front ammo box basically you just got a rubber strap that goes over you've got the ammo belt coming out which appears to have snapped um, again that's supposed to be up at an angle like that focus so you've got an ammo belt coming up that goes into the GPMG two ammo boxes and a rubber strap um, that was quite easy to do uh, 20 mil grenade launcher um, grenades it's basically an ammo box it's not going to focus is it 20 mil grenade launcher with a belt of um, grenades coming out that obviously goes on the side of the GMG launcher we've got the weapons mount here that I was on about with the angled bracket so as you can see that bracket kind of sits up at an awkward angle um, but everything's free moving so you can move this up and down you can move that backwards and forwards and then the whole thing will will spin um, but again, apologies for this really crap focus because it's, it's not focusing properly. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, and then the end bit is just basically everything's all together. So that's the end of the build. The tyres and the wheels are done, um, but they haven't been put on. So let's get rid of the instructions for now. Let's give you a general overview. So that's the finished thing. With all everything built. Um, so like I was saying. This is all going to get taped off. For painting. And then I can glue the front to it. And that ain't an issue. Uh, just putting the side panels on and everything. But once this is dry. It actually dries quite sturdy. Um, it's just the initial part. Getting all these little pieces in. And letting it dry before you try and do anything. But that is what. The jackal is going to turn out to be and then after painting it will look all right so front overview of the front there you go i know there's lots of glue marks on there but that will be missing once it um gets primed you've got the arm here for the weapon the commander's weapon and that's basically it so some of the things i've noticed on this now Despite how detailed this kit is, you don't get a, a hook for the winch and it doesn't supply any cotton or anything to be winch rope. And it doesn't even give you the cover, the canvas cover that goes over the winch to protect it from muck and dirt. So if you're going to do one of these, you can either make yourself some PVC tissue paper and turn it into canvas and cover the whole thing. Or you're going to have to source your own hook uh, to put on as a winch rope. It also doesn't supply the canvas covers for the lights. There's black covers that um, are on Velcro and they basically fold down and it covers the whole light area and then it wraps around the side on Velcro and it blacks the lights out for night. So you don't get any of those canvas covers on the sides neither. So again, if you wanted to do one of these and you wanted to add that extra bit of detail, you could just roll up some, cam uh, some PVC tissue paper and make little rolls or you can have them down and around what usually happens on these is one will stay up and one pops down all on its own um so that's missing off the kit the, the winch hook is a big thing there so i've had to source my own i'm gonna have to double check but i'm sure there's uh, an orange side light missing off the side of the jackal 2 here um and again that comes with a black cover that goes around it we've also mentioned that all the webbing straps down the sides are missing so that's something I'm going to do with um, cotton, like, uh, what do you call it, crocheting, sort of like cotton. 
so it's slightly thicker and I'm going to make some like netting to go around here for all the other little bags on the back there's no cover for the as, again the same as the front there's no blackout covers for the back again you would need a couple of little bits of PVC tissue paper to make a canvas to go around the back lights um, so there's a couple of things missing off the kit what I have managed to source I found some photo etch with some ratchet straps some mini ratchet straps so I'm going to use these and the buckles to go on the jerry cans at the back so I've got some some of those so that's a little bit added extra um, I've got some spare little side lights so I'll use them to put on the side if I'm sh I know the coyotes got them and I can't remember offhand if the jackal's got one or two um, and I don't think the jackal one had any but I'm sure there's a couple of orange lights missing off the side of the vehicle I've managed to get myself a couple of little 135th scale SA80s so they're going to go on the doors for the commander and the driver so that's not in the kit and then for the wind chuck, what I'm having to do is I'm going to have to try and make the best looking winch hook out of that sort of stuff so i've got a plastic one here that i'm going to try and cut down and make into a hook i've got a metal one that i'm going to try and file down to try and make that more of a better hook and then i've got a little bit of plastic here that i could try and make a hook out of that as well so i've got three options there to try and make a hook for the winch uh, there is a fire extinguisher in the um an extra one in the kit but i've got an extra fire extinguisher there and that one generally goes behind the back seat uh why is that why again we're back to the non-focusing thing um so i've got an extra fully complete fire extinguisher and where that one goes that generally sits in here on this back wall here just behind the driver's seat uh, there is actually a little pin down here but it's not mentioned in the instructions so just if you want to add that extra bit of detail on that pin just stick another fire extinguisher and then you've got all three fire extinguishers that you come with um so that's the extras i'm putting on i'm also going to make the canvas covers and everything for it what you're left with is a lot of um extras so everything other than these bow shackles here I've got bow shackles there that need to go on so that's the only bits left to go on the kit but all of this is spare you get a lot of suspension components like arms so you get like an extra two sets of the arms uh, you get lots of wheels and wheel covers and stuff you get lots of little steering components like that for example you, you get an extra four of those you get two extra Two extra jerry can holders and what i what i can see from this is what this is is a bitch you'll need to make a coyote um which is the extra wheel station and the coyote has an extra two of these and then you've obviously got two extra sets of wheels um so you you've got the extra wheels there already you get a lot of ammo boxes of various types so you get 20 millimeter grenade launcher boxes that you need to make up there's 762 boxes um you get lots of little 762 ammo boxes there and then it's just general sort of like suspension bits that are left over uh spare wheel see there is there is a substantial bit of plastic there that you don't use but if you lose some of the smaller pieces uh, <laughs> you don't get any spares of those so you've got to be really careful with the bits that you've got but just expect to have loads left over at the end so that's pretty much where i'm at with the jackal oh um photo etch you get a spare piece of photo etch for the rear tailgate you've got spare handles so one two three you, you get an extra 12 handles you know the ones that i was saying go down the sides here you get an extra 12 sets of them so what that would be for that would be for the extra two jerry can holders for the coyote um you get sand channels, you've 
I haven't used these mud flaps. They'll go on right at the very end. These brackets, what they're for is they go in between the jerry cans. So the two pieces of the jerry can go together. And this goes in the middle. And all I can think of why they put these in the middle is to simulate the plastic weld of a real jerry can. So I didn't bother putting any of these in. I've just glued them together. But these brackets are for the jerry cans. And then you've got a couple of extra spares here for the valve on the tyres or on the wheels. So you don't damage the valves. And that's basically everything spare. So the next part of this then, it'll be primed and we'll start doing the painting and weathering and getting it all together. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. Oh, another thing um, I forgot to mention. The steering bracket here has a, cam a black canvas cover that goes all the way around it. So I'm going to put PVC again, a bit of tissue paper and make a canvas to go around here to protect it. And that would be black. Um, so that's where I'm at. It's Bill, it just needs painting, and then it's on to the diorama, and then we'll go from there. So, same again, if you've got any questions, anything you want to ask, anything you've noticed, um, by all means, please ask. Um, and then we'll go from there. So I look forward to the next part, which will be this being built up, and well, painted up, and then that's, that's basically it done. So, thanks for your time, guys, and I'll speak to you later.